Hi, it's Mr. Springer, and in this video, we're going to uh, I'm going to teach about stoichiometry a little bit, mass to mass stoichiometry. Uh, a word about calculators before we begin. Uh, if you're in a first year high school chemistry class, probably even a first year college chem class, you'll probably be uh, find a calculator like this and very adequate. It does pretty much all you need and more. Uh, you want one that has a, a an EE or an EXP button, so you can do exponents and exponential notation. Uh, you probably want one with a 1 over X button, an X squared button. Those are nice in the square root. Uh, also, be good to have a log and a natural log when we get into uh, topics later on in, this, in the uh, year. And other than that, this is a very adequate calculator. It'll put things into scientific notation for you if you know how to do it. And it's just a real nice, very affordable alternative that you can use for doing your chemistry at this level. When you get into more advanced, you probably want, you might even want a graphing calculator at that point. But definitely first year in high school, um, you know, if you're not AP, that's more than enough calculator for you. And you probably could get by on that and pass your test if you had to. So, without any further ado, here we go. Uh, stoichiometry, we're going mass to mass stoichiometry. Here's the steps that I have my students go through. First, we need a balanced equation. If you don't have a balanced equation, you might as well give up. You're not going to be able to do stoichiometry. Uh, the second step is whatever you'll be given some kind of a mass, we want to convert that into moles. The next step, we're going to multiply by the mole ratio, which is what we're trying to find. Divide moles of what we're trying to find over moles of what we're given. And we get those numbers from the balanced equation. See, that's why we have to have the balanced equation is so you can do step three, and if you don't do step three, you're not doing stoichiometry. It doesn't matter. You're not doing it. And finally, if we're doing mass to mass, we're going to have to convert what we get back to grams. I like to do it in one big long equation, and uh, works out pretty good for me. So here we go. The equation that we've been using all along, since we did that first quick demo video with the citric acid and the baking soda. I put in 1.5 grams of the baking soda and 0.5 grams of the citric acid. And what we need to do, following those steps from stoichiometry, since I've got two givens, I'm going to have to do two problems with this. That's the safest way, is to do two problems. Let's figure out the mass of the, of the carbon dioxide gas that can be made from this equation using these two mass of chemicals. So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my first given. I'm going to find out how much carbon dioxide I can make if I use up all 1.5 grams of this. Then I'm going to start it again and I'm going to use the 0.5 grams of the citric acid, find out how many grams of carbon dioxide I can make with that. Whichever one makes the least amount, well, that's the amount that we can make because we're going to run out of one or the other, probably run out of one before the other, and the reaction stops when either one is gone. So the most we can make is the smaller answer. So we'll start here with my 1.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate. My, my first step, I've, I've, oh, I've got my balanced equation here. We did this in an earlier video. It took three of those one of those, one of those, make three and three. We did that in an earlier video. If you haven't watched that one, I would recommend it. But anyway, we'll start with the 1.5 grams of the sodium, ooh, I spelled that wrong, sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. Sorry about that. The second step, I after the balanced equation, I have to convert this into moles. Now, hopefully you know that if I want moles, I've got grams and I want moles, I'm going to have to multiply that by some fraction that puts grams of baking soda in the bottom and moles of baking soda on top. And I need some number that relates grams and moles of sodium bicarbonate. And that number is the molar mass. The molar mass of the sodium bicarbonate is 84. 0.01 grams per one mole. This number is always one. It 
doesn't matter that there's a three here. This number is always one. That's the number of grams in one mole of baking soda. So my grams are seven by seven and a half. I canceled them. See, we're going to cancel things as we go. And we'll end up with so the next step after we have done our convert to moles, we want to multiply by the mole ratio, which is the moles of what we're trying to find, in this case carbon dioxide, divided by the moles of what we were given, in this case it's seven by carbon. So it's three moles CO2 and three moles. Now the moles of seven bicarbonate cancel each other. And what we've done at this point is we have turned my 1.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate into moles of CO2. If I stop now and do the math, I'll have an answer in moles of CO2. But I don't want moles of CO2. I want grams of CO2. I'm going from mass to mass. So the next step is I need something that's going to tell me the number of grams of CO2 and a certain number of moles of CO2. And that number, once again, is the molar mass. So I need the molar mass of CO2, which just happens to be 44.01 grams of CO2 is one mole of CO2. So now my moles of CO2 are canceled. And I'm ready to do the math, except for I'm going to do one more step before I get to that math. See that 3 over 3? I'm going to cancel both these numbers. Now, I like to, at this point, come up, try to get an estimate of, of an answer that seems reasonable because, you know what, when I punch numbers in the calculator, sometimes I miss, sometimes I hit the wrong button, sometimes it's not clear when I start, sometimes I get in a hurry, and I don't always get the right answer. So I like to have an estimate of what my answer might be. So everything is canceled except for these three numbers, and 44 over 84 is just slightly more than half. So a little more than half times one and a half. That's not a very big number. One and a half times a half, that's about three quarters. So let's see what happens when I punch those numbers into my calculator. 1.5, oops, wrong number, 1.5 divided by 84.01. Times 44 over 0 0.78579931. I only have two digits in my first number here. I'd like to have two digits in my final answer. 0 0.78 is what AP would accept. AP can't do that. If you like to round that 8 up to a 9 because it's a 5 afterwards, AP, they like for college board likes it to be, if it's even followed by a 5, you leave it even. If it's odd followed by a 5, you leave it odd. So I'm going to leave it 0.78 grams CO2. Talk to your teacher. Find out how they want you to do it because they're the ones grading your papers, not me. So if I use up every bit of my 1.5 grams of the sodium bicarbonate, I get 0.78 grams of CO2. I had predicted 0.75, right? Three quarters. That's pretty close. That's a pretty good guess. So now I need to go back and do it again using the 0.5 grams of the citric acid. Okay, so I got my balanced equation. I got to turn this as my given, my second given, 0.5 grams of the citric acid. I need to turn that into moles. Again, I'm going to do like I did here. I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of the citric acid. And the molar mass of the citric acid is 192.4% of the citric acid. Calculated that in an earlier book. The next step is my find over given times the mole ratio. Oh, first I'm going to cancel my grams of the citric acid. Now it's three moles of CO2. So 
over one mole. Cancel that. So now I'm at the CO2 level again, and I need to multiply by the molar mass, 46.31 molar mass. So there's two, there's one mole. This is my three over one mole. So there's two moles. This time my threes don't cancel because it's a three over one. And uh, something I kind of went through it pretty fast before. If you're doing this kind of a problem, I I figure I'm better off. The fewer times I have to push the equal sign in the calculator, the better off I am. So, and I don't always have to multiply by one or divide by one, right? Multiplying and dividing by one doesn't change anything. So, if it's on the top in the numerator, we multiply. If it's in the denominator, we divide. Sometimes I have a lot of students who will go 0.5 times 1 times 3 times 44.01, write that number down, and then 192.14 times 1 times 1, and write that number down. And then they go back and they type those into the calculator. They're pushing so many buttons on that calculator, it's no wonder that they mess up half the time. So you're much better off if you can do it all at one time, hit the equal sign once. You don't have to write anything down. You just go. So here we go. Let's see. I can't cancel this one over. So, okay, we should uh, estimate again, shouldn't we? So here is 44. Here's 192. Well, that's getting awfully close to 200. And if this was 40, and this was 200, well, if 5 times 40 would be, or 0.5 times 40, that's about 20. 20 over 2, that's about a 10. So about 0.3. That's my guess. I could be way off. But my hunch is around 0.3. So let's see what happens. Well, 5 divided by 192.14 times 3 times 44.01 equals, oh, look at that, 0.3435776. But I started with only one digit. I'm going to end with only one digit. And I'm going to, if that blows you away, if you want to write, I tell my kids, if they don't know how to read, how to do the rules for, for a significant figure, then just give me everything. Don't round to some random place that you want to round to. Either give me everything or, or learn the rule. So at that point, I predicted 0.3, didn't I? I'm a pretty good predictor. So if we started with 0.15 grams of the sodium bicarbonate and 0.5 grams of the citric acid, how many grams of carbon dioxide can I make? Well, if all the 1.5 grams gets used up, I make 78 or 0.78 grams of carbon dioxide. If only if all 0.5 grams of the citric acid get used up, I can only make 0.3 grams. So the right answer is, if I'm mixing those two chemicals in that proportion together, the best I can do is 0.3 grams of carbon dioxide. This is the safest way. You can probably figure out a way, maybe if you're smart, you can figure out a way that you don't have to do this twice and figure out and uh, pick the smaller answer. You might be able to come up with a way to do that. And if you do, more power to you. But this is a safe way to do it. You do them both, you pick the smaller answer, and you'll do fine. So, good luck with your stoichiometry. It's not too bad. And it's always the same every time. It's those same four steps. If you can learn those four steps and do them, stoichiometry will be a breeze, and you'll be smarter than so many people out there. Have a good time. Talk to you next time.